Hello everyone. Now this is the part eight of NEET MDS 2021 question paper series. So before starting this video, I just want to say that these are just remember question. So there may, must be some variations in the questions or options given the answers. So please let me know in the comment section. Now before start, now let's start the video. So the first question was about the lidocaine with epinephrine in finger surgery. So in this question, they have asked that the uh, finger surgery is going on. What should be the preferred local anesthetic agent, lidocaine with or without uh, epinephrine? So traditionally, the surgeons were thought that the uh, local anesthesia containing epinephrine should not be injected into the fingers. It is because adrenaline may constrict the arteries and reduces the blood supply to those organs, resulting in complications. But nowadays, many clinical uh, trials going on in which they uh, contraindicate this theory. Now, um, the sex, next question was about the width of attached gingiva. So, uh, um, in which they have asked that the an old patient with supra erupted teeth, what will be the width of attached gingiva? So, there is increase in the width of attached gingiva with age and supra erupted teeth. The next question was about this uh, doxycycline site of action. So it gener it is three dash and of the sixteen S R R N A. So uh, in bacterial replication, an interaction that is important for translation initiation of protein occur at three dash and of sixteen S R N A R R N A, which is found on the ribosome of thirty S subunit. So tetracycline such as doxycycline are thought to inhibit translation by binding to 16S rRNA portion of ribosome and preventing the binding of tRNA to the uh, uh, RNA 30S uh, bacterial ribosome subunit, which is necessary for delivery of amino acids for protein synthesis. I hope this clear, it is clear. So uh, basically the site of action for do uh, doxycycline is 3 dash end of 16S rRNA. Now moving to the next question. The next question was about the tracheostomy tube. Uh, so it was an image-based question in which they have asked about the cuff uh, of tr tracheostomy tube. So cuff is a balloon at the distal end of the tube, which when inflated can provide a seal between the tube and tracheal wall. So the cuff can be deflated as on insertion or in, in inflated to protect the aspiration and allow positive pressure ventilation. So basically, cuff helps in positive pressure ventilation. And uh, let's discuss about the other parts. So other part is uh, outer cannula. So this is the main body of the tube, which passes into the trachea. Now, inner cannula, it is a removable tube, which passes into the outer cannula and can be removed or replaced to promote a clear airway. Now, pilot balloon. So an external balloon connected to inflation line to, to the internal cuff. So when the internal cuff is inflated, the pilot balloon is also inflated and vice versa. Now moving to the next question. So the next question was about the DM DMFT. So DMFT index, the principle and rules are no tooth is counted more than once. D, M or F should be recorded separately. When counting the decayed teeth, also count the those teeth which have restoration with recurrent decay, then care must be taken to list the missing teeth if missing due to caries. The exclusion criteria are third molars, unerupted teeth, congenitally missing teeth, and supernumerary teeth. Teeth removed for any other reasons than caries, teeth restored for any other reasons than caries, and primary tooth retained with the permanent successor erupted. Now moving to the next question. The next question was about the fruity odor. Uh, in diabetes mellitus. So it is due to acetone. It is also known as acetone breath. So a sweet fruity odor can be a sign of ketoacidosis and acute complication of diabetes. So fruity smelling breath is a sign of high level of ketone in, the, uh, in someone who already has diabetes. So uh, it's also one of the first signs that doctors look for when they check for uh, diabetes ketoacidosis. Now moving to the next question. So the next question was about the buccolingual cortical expansion. So in which they have uh, asked about, uh, it is uh, more commonly seen in. 
so let's discuss about this so buccolingual cortical expansion are less frequently seen in odontogenic keratocyst and it is more more commonly seen in ameloblastoma dentigerous cyst and radicular cyst i hope it's clear now moving to the next question so next question was about uh, uh, it was an image based question and it was about janvel lesion so the janvel lesion is seen in infective endocarditis so these lesions are painless frequently hemorrhagic lesions seen most commonly on the palms and soles particularly on the base of the thumb and little finger seen in infective endocarditis i hope it's clear now moving to the next question so the next question was about the factor 8 deficiency so uh, so factor 8 deficiency leads to hemophilia a so in the question paper they have asked about the mild or moderate hemophilia so mild hemophilia is where the factor level is more than 0.05 to 0.04 uh, international unit per ml in which 5 to 40% of the no normal is and uh, moderate is 0.01 to 0.05 international unit per ml it is 1 to 5% of the normal and severe is less than 0.01 international unit per ml with less than 1% of the normal forms so in in um, uh in severe cases the spontaneous bleeding into the joints and or muscles usually without without any apparent cause occurs in moderate uh, with 1 to 5% of normal occasional spontaneous bleeding longer lasting bleeding with minor trauma or injury occurs in mild 5 to five uh, percent to less than forty percent of the normal, and in this the severe bleeding with major trauma or surgery, spontaneous bleeding is rare. Now the next question was about the occlusal aspect of mandibular molar. Uh, I think it was a uh, mandibular second molar, but uh, I'm not sure. So the occlusal aspect of mandibular first uh, molar includes five cusps, and in uh, the uh, mandibular second molar include four cusps. so the the four cusps are two lingual and two buccal so mandibular second molar are different from from first that no distal cusp is present and all cusp are of equal size and uh, it there is a well defined central group crossed by buccal and lingual uh, direction so now moving to the next question so the next question was about the icms caries category so the according to icms uh, caries category 0 uh, to 6 is the uh, scoring criteria in which 0 is no evidence of caries one is the initial caries 2 uh, is the distinct visual change in the enamel 3 is the localized enamel breakdown due to caries with no visual dentine and 4 is the underlying dark shadow from the dentine and the fifth is the uh, distinct uh, cavity with visible dentin and uh, sixth is the extensive uh, distinct cavity with visible dentin so uh, this is the uh, iccms caries categories now thank you so much that's all for today's video if you have any query or question please let me know in the comment section and if you find this video informative then please press thumbs up then till then take care and bye bye happy learning